Go ahead and begin by wrapping your lead wire around the hook shank about 10 times. Now cut off the wire as close as you can to the hook shank near the bead. Now guide the tag end of the wire around the hook shank and push the wire flush against the back side of the bead. Now go ahead and cut the additional tag end of the wire and guide the end of the wire around the hook. Attaching wire to your hook will do three things for your fly. One, it'll provide additional weight. Second, it'll push the bead up against the eye of the hook. And third, it'll help create a tapered body. Now go ahead and attach your thread just behind the wire and clip the excess thread. Now advance your thread forward, securing the wire to the hook shank, and create a thread dam just behind the base of the wire. Now advance your thread back towards the bend of the hook, and then forward, then back again, creating a good thread base. Now go ahead and prepare two brown goose bias so the convex side of each goose bias is facing one another. While holding the tips of the goose bias with your material hand, go ahead and place each goose bias on the near and far side of the hook shank with your fingertips in line with the end of the thread base. With your thread hanging in line with the barb of the hook and secure the bias onto the hook shank with two to three secure thread wraps. You want the tail of the goose bite to be about a half a shank length long. So go ahead and grab each butt ends of the goose bite and pull them towards the eye of the hook until they are an appropriate length. Now begin to advance your thread forward to the 50% point of the hook shank, securing the goose bite to the hook shank as you wrap. With the pair of scissors, go ahead and cut off the butt ends of the goose bites. and advance your thread back towards the base of the tails, then forward, ending at the 60% point of the hook shank. Now prepare a four inch piece of French oval tensile and attach it at the 60% point of the hook shank and advance your thread back towards the base of the tails, securing the tensile to the near side of the hook shank as you wrap. With your thread hanging just in front of the tails, Go ahead and apply some hot purple SLF prism dubbing. Now begin to wrap your thread around the hook shank, beginning at the base of the tails, creating a tapered body, ending with your dubbing just behind the bead. Now grab the French oval tensil and begin to wrap it around the hook shank, creating an equally segmented body. Now go ahead and secure the French oval tensil.
to the near side of the hook shank just behind the bead. And cut off the excess tensile as close as you can to the tie down point. Now go ahead and prepare an appropriate sized hen cape feather and attach it to the near side of the hook shank making sure that you peel off all the webby fibers exposing the quill. The inside of the hen cape feather should be facing the near side of the hook shank when attached. To ensure that you've chosen an appropriate size hackle, you want to make sure that the tips of the hackle slightly extend past the point of the hook when wrapped around the hook shank. Using a pair of hackle pliers, go ahead and attach it to the tip of the hackle and begin to wrap the hackle around the hook shank, palmering the fibers back towards the bend of the hook as you wrap. Once the hackle is reached just behind the bead, go ahead and secure it to the near side of the hook shank. Now go ahead and grasp the hackle fibers and pull them back towards the bend of the hook and create a small thread base just behind the bead. This will ensure the hackle fibers will splay back towards the bend of the hook when wrapped around the hook shank. Now go ahead and place one white goose bite on top of the hook shank with the concave side facing the hook shank. The tip of the goose bite should be slightly angled towards the far side of the hook shank while the butt end of the goose bite is angled slightly towards the near side of the hook shank and attach the goose by it just behind the bead with secure thread wraps. Go ahead and prepare another white goose by it and place it on top of the hook shank with the concave side facing the hook shank and attach it just behind the bead. Again, you want to make sure that the tip of the goose by it is angled towards the near side of the hook shank while the butt end of the goose bite is angled towards the far side of the hook shank. You want to make sure that the goose bite tips are even with one another and they extend almost to the base of the tail. With a pair of scissors, go ahead and cut off the butt ends of the goose bites as close as you can to the tie down point. Go ahead and pull back the hackle fibers and create secure thread wraps covering up the butt ends of the goose bites. Now go ahead and finish this fly using a whip finish tool, making sure that each wrap of the whip finish tool is behind the bead. Using a pair of scissors, go ahead and trim off any excess dubbing so you ensure you have a proportional fly. And that's how you tie the purple prince nymph.